You cannot confuse solitude with solitariness. Solitude for me is psychological of the mind. Solitariness is physical. One is debilitating, the other comforting. Carlos Castaneda, active side of infinity. The world of everyday life with its transients, constant demands and obligations is too demanding on the human energy resource. Everyday life is exhausting. Involved in a fluid sequence of days, a person often loses the vision of prospects, reference points, and forgetfulness is a heavy burden on the realization of his goals. Without goals, the path becomes a burden rather than a challenge. Being in solitariness is a forgotten technique that can restore a sufficient energy level for a person to become consciously and, most importantly, creatively approach one's own life, fully realizing one's potential as a creator, maker, and explorer. After all, such a state is the living heart of a happy human life. The technique of solitariness allows to reveal in a person one's inner resource which has become inaccessible to one as a result of decreased awareness and loss of control over the daily bustle, but which is spent by a person unconsciously, as it is said, subconsciously, to maintain the usual order of things every day, from year to year. Not using the technique of solitariness, being in full view of circumstances, being accessible to them and extremely vulnerable, a person does not revise own attitude to life, the image of which does not allow to one to accumulate enough energy to raise own level of awareness and become more flexible and freer, lighter and unpredictable. In such a state, a person is able to influence circumstances, being out of reach of their often negative influence. In order to understand the technique of solitariness and accept its necessity, we need to understand what is the root of the matter and the reason why a person becomes so energy intensive and exhausted and why it is solitariness that can counteract this order of things. One cannot do without at least a cursory acquaintance with the philosophy of antiquity and its mysteries. The teachings of the Toltecs, an Indian people who geographically inhabited the region of Central America in the 8th, 12th centuries AD, say that the object on which a person spends the lion's share of own internal resource and all the energy available to one is owns personal history or rather its maintenance in the eyes of others. The self-image to which an individual becomes attached is incredibly demanding of one's moral and mental resources, and the details of the self-image constantly need to be described and reinforced so that the whole image seems holistic and believable to one and the people around one. All this consumes most of the energy available to a person and is called one's personal history. There is nothing reprehensible in creating a personal story, and this is even logical because any of the people is a social being and conducts its activities in society, which in itself implies the creation of an image. Excessive energy expenditure begins with the individual's attachment to this image. A person stops thinking and imagining himself outside of personal history, completely identifying himself with it. Solitariness allows each person to realize that he or she is not only a personal history but is unimaginably more than just a sequence of descriptive images on a timeline. The philosophers of antiquity and the sages of the East said that man is a most complex energy structure, a microcosm, a complete reflection of the universe or macrocosm. Hermes Trismegistus, a philosopher and educator who lived long before our era, said, as above, so below. The human individual is the universe in miniature. According to ancient esoteric doctrines, the keys to understanding nature and all that exists are hidden in human nature, in man himself. Therefore, the main object of study of all philosophies and teachings has always been man himself. Solitariness is a natural and necessary technique for maintaining vitality and a sufficient level of resistance to the adversities of life while maintaining efficiency and the ability to unleash creativity and implement plans. Solitariness is a physical practice associated with clarity of perception of the surrounding reality. Loneliness, with which people confuse solitariness, is a purely emotional state whose negative effect on a person's mental and physical health is in direct proportion to his attachment and complete dependence on one's own personal history developing a sense of self-importance. 
the more a person thinks and perceives oneself exclusively within the framework of one's personal history, the more important one is to oneself and the greater the need to maintain a specific descriptive image of one's own life in the eyes of people, which requires direct interaction with the environment where a person must transmit the created description of one's own image. In other words, the more a person's consciousness is anchored in personal history, the more dependent he or she is on own environment. The lack of an exact match between the created image of oneself in one's own mind and this image in the minds of the people around us causes a depressing state of loneliness. Your trouble is that you have to explain everything to everybody, compulsively, and at the same time you want to keep the freshness, the newness of what you do. Well, since you can't be excited after explaining everything you've done, you lie in order to keep on going. Severe dependence on one's personal history exhausts a person, since, according to Toltec philosophy, one loses the lion's share of own energy to maintain own self-image, and thus is deprived of clarity of perception of reality. Constantly in need of other people's attention, in moments of scarcity, a person experiences loneliness. Again, loneliness is an exclusively emotional state of a person. Solitariness is a physical and mental practice in which a person, as the Toltecs say, is able to open up to the impulses of the infinite, one's own true self, restoring a healthy level of energy and using a personal hidden resource. Solitariness allows a person to rethink what is happening, go beyond it and see own life as if from the outside, accumulating understanding through philosophizing and mental activity and increasing one's own awareness. It's like a break in the race of life, while loneliness is an additional burden during an already difficult race. Let's look at the concepts of solitariness and loneliness from an interesting angle. The root of the word solitariness is sol, which means in Latin language, the sun. A person in this state feels the radiance of one's inner sun, his spirit, which illuminates one's soul and gives life to one's body just as the sun in our solar system gives life to everything that inhabits it. So, a person feels unity with the universe within himself and through his inner sun feels a connection with the abyss of the external world, while the root of the word loneliness is alone. In this state, a person is alone with his difficulties. This condition is dangerous and depletes a person's internal resource. The loneliness diverts a person's attention and feelings from the feeling of unity with the universe. This is how fear appears in the human soul and doubt in his mind. To understand the esoteric and philosophical meaning of the technique of solitariness, it is necessary to delve into the philosophy of the Rosicrucians. The Knights of the Mystical Order of the Rosen Cross had the deepest philosophy and worldview which allowed them to intervene in the life of society and individual states in the Middle Ages and in the modern period. The Rosicrucians considered and started from the esoteric description of a person who, according to their worldview, is a triple structure – spirit, soul or intellect and body. A similar tripartite structure was represented by the Rosicrucians as three suns. They were sure that in addition to the physical sun, which heats everything physical on Earth and accumulates solar energy, there is a sun that feeds the forces of the human intellect or the human soul, and, finally, the spiritual sun, whose glow actually animates the entire nature of the earth and whose radiation fluids accumulate the human spirit, which directly interacts with the sun. On this occasion, the great Swiss alchemist, naturalist and philosopher of the Middle Ages, Paracelsus, wrote, There is an earthly sun, which is the cause of all heat and all who can see the sun, and those who are blind can feel its warmth. And there is the eternal sun, which is the source of all wisdom, and those whose spiritual faculties are awakened to life will see this sun and will be aware of its existence. But those who have not achieved spiritual consciousness can still feel its power through the inner ability called intuition. Solitariness is a practice in which a person is able to interact with the three hypotheses of the sun, with his tripartite structure. At the same time, the Rosicrucians, developing their philosophy, said that Lucifer, the intellectual sun, represents the intellect without the illumination of it by the spiritual light of the spiritual sun, 
and they called the light of the intellectual sun false light. Developing and evolving, the false light outgrows and is redeemed by the true light of the soul called the second logos or Christ. Christ is the soul's sun, which is in close connection with the spiritual source, which radiates the light of life and supports nature. To visualize what has been said, consider the diagram. Helena Blavatsky in her book Isis Unveiled said that the influence on the material world is exerted through three esoteric and physical categories, faith, idea, and power. There is a schematic circle depicting the physical material world in which power acts as a form of transfer of the accumulated energy of the physical sun from object to object. The intellect operating with objects of the physical world and describing them comes into direct contact with matter. At the same time, it is part of the world of ideas in which an idea is a form of transfer of accumulated energy from the intellectual sun. In other words, it is the sphere of human thoughts. Meanwhile, the intellect, according to the Rosicrucian philosophy, is in close contact with the soul world being its undeveloped part or part not illuminated by spiritual light. The soul sun or the activity of the human soul is the activity of the human intellect developed on the basis of feelings, in which feelings act as an equivalent method of studying the surrounding reality, like intellectual activity itself or rational intelligence activity. Expressed in other words, the soul sun, Christ, represents the developed sensory intellectual perception of man. Unlike the intellectual sun, the soul sun, still being part of the world of ideas, comes into direct contact with the spiritual sun, which is located in the world of faith or philosophy, depicted schematically by an open circle, since this world represents infinity, reflecting the nature of the human spirit. Rosicrucian philosophy asserted that the spiritual sun, through faith, radiated light onto the soul sun of man, which perceived the idea, through faith or philosophy, with the help of developed and revealed senses. Alchemists said that at this moment, conception occurs as a person becomes pregnant with an idea in accordance with his faith and philosophy. In contact with the intellectual son, the soul conveyed, with the help of sensory reactions experienced by man, the image of an idea. After interpreting these reactions, the human intellect put what was conveyed into verbal and figurative form, composing its description in the language of terms and categories, and developing a plan for the embodiment of this idea in the material world. According to alchemists, this process was called gestation. Further, thanks to the power and energy of the material sun, the idea was embodied in the physical world. In the language of alchemy, a birth took place. The technique of solitariness allows such an act of birth to take place. According to the esoteric vision of ancient philosophers, using the practice of solitariness and isolation from external and internal stimuli, a person embodies the mystery of creation, first seeing and perceiving an idea with his senses, then thinking about it, and then bringing it to life. That is why ancient philosophers believe that man is a magical creature capable of materializing in the manifest physical world what he perceived in the unmanifested world of ideas, different from the world of tangible forms. One of the key ideas of the Hermetic philosophers was the idea of developing a person's intellectual abilities, without which one is unable to develop sensory perception that complements the range of interaction available to a person with the outside world. That is why all philosophical schools that make man the object of their study tell about the need for education and knowledge, which should accompany a person throughout one's entire life. Understanding the adept's path should take place in complete solitariness. Constantly expanding one's own horizons, a person develops own intellect and through it reveals own sensory potential. The Rosicrucians argued that by understanding and listening to one's feelings, a person communicates with own spirit. There are two types of solitariness. The first type is external, which is solitariness from the outside world and from its energy flows and influence. Toltec philosophy says that for external solitariness, a person must have a personal place in which he is comfortable and where he feels replenishment, 
of one's own strength. It was these places that Carlos Castaneda mentioned in his books, calling them places of power, where a person is touched by own spirit. Solitariness can also be internal, which is essentially a deeper and more complex practice. With it, a person isolates oneself from the internal noise of everyday life, which constantly accompanies a person in one's thoughts. By pushing away the flywheel of habitual and annoying thoughts that are introduced into the consciousness with the help of concentration and meditation, a person launches the sequence of thoughts that one needs and which will lead one to the desired solution to the issue. Internal solitariness significantly contributes to the development of a person's thinking abilities. External and internal solitariness allow one to launch a creative impulse, thanks to which the individual reveals own potential and uses a hidden and previously untapped internal resource. Without the technique of solitariness, a person is forced to expend enormous potential on maintaining one's own image in the eyes of others without the opportunity to free oneself from the harmful influence of attachment to one's own personal history and its constant maintenance. Internal and external solitariness are a necessary technique for any person striving for a philosophical attitude towards life and the maximum development of own mental abilities. This is how the inner genius touches a person. This is how a person has a chance to find his path.